Welcome to the scurrychurchofchrist.org. The Bible says in Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, my people are destroyed uh, for lack of knowledge. Please don't let this happen to you. Feel free to contact us at scurrychurchofchrist.org uh, where you can visit us and any Bible question that you may have, we will do our best to answer. We are so glad you decided to visit us. All right, it's good to see everyone here uh, this evening. We're going to get right into it because I want to cover, we're going to cover a lot of ground. Um, we're going to, I'm going to show you tonight how Satan uh, goes global. Uh, Satan goes global. I want you to think about that. We're going to look at that. This is how Satan goes global. Now, we know what we've been uh, studying uh, concerning uh, Satan, we know that he works behind the scenes. We know that he lost the battle. Um, uh, Satan lost his influence. Uh, now the gospel has influence all over the whole world. We study that, uh, but he still, he still, he still can influence. But now remember, he's exposed. The gospel is influential. It's all over the world. Remember, Paul said that in the book of Colossians, and the gospel is still spreading. And so Satan is very angry. And remember, we talked about he's, he has already doomed. We look at those passages. here. If we have any visitors on tonight, I, I urge you to go back to the other lessons and catch up. Uh, it's very interesting. Um, and so I want you to understand that um, he's angry. He's already doomed. Understand this, that he's trying to uh, influence as many people as possible to be doomed with him. Now remember, he's already doomed. Okay, and so that's what he does. And his objective is to influence people uh, to uh, not obey the law of God. Remember, Galatians 6, Galatians 6 2, uh, James 1 25, we are under the law of Christ and the way that sin is death. And we look at that before uh, you break God's law, that's a sin. And the payment for that is eternal damnation. And Satan knows that. Now remember what we talked about before, and I'm inclined to believe that uh, there is law in the heavenly realm. Just by studying the structure in the heavenly realm, and Satan was not created evil, he was, because God creates everything he creates is good. We studied that, and so Satan made a choice. Remember, the angelic beings, the spiritual beings, also free moral agents have the right to choose, and so are human beings. So we looked at all those scriptures that relate to that. So Satan chose to do what he did, and he's doomed. I want you to understand that. Uh, he's angry. He's First uh, Peter five eight. He's walking about like a roaring lion, so he's angry, seeking whom he may devour. I remember we talked about that. His power uh, was his influence. He was, he was influential. He, he, uh, the whole world sinned against God. That's why Jesus came. Now, I want you to understand this because we're going to uh, really get into it. I want you to listen to what I'm saying. Now, don't forget about 2 Corinthians 2.11. The Bible says, lest Satan should uh, get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. And so, therefore, I'm going to the text to comprehend, to ascertain, just to find out what his devices are. Now, the Bible says, God says that I can know his schemes, his devices. And that's what we're doing uh, tonight. I'm going to make it simple. And if you like, study on your own to get more into it. So remember we talked about in the beginning. Now I want someone to get me um, John 8, 44, please. John 8, 44, in Revelation chapter 2 and verse 10. And uh, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1 through 3. So that's John 8, 44, Revelation 2 and verse 10, Ephesians 2, 1 and 3. <laughs> I've got John 8, 44. Okay. Now, before he reads that, remember we talked about Satan. We know he exists. That's a fact. 
and he's a spiritual being. He cannot possess us today, and we'll eventually study that. We'll study demon possession. Um, he cannot uh, interfere with our free will. God is in charge. Um, he takes advantage of an opportunity. And we saw that right in the beginning with the serpent. You had God gives the law. And I want you to remember this because it's important. God gave the law, um, the serpent, uh, which is the most crafty of all the beasts on the field. He influenced uh, Eve. She influenced her husband. And they sinned against God. And from there, from that sin, the entire world sinned against God, which means the entire, the entire world broke the law of God. Okay? And so I want you to see that. Then we learn from that passage, uh, Satan was behind the scene. Uh, when, remember, when God punishes Adam, he punishes Eve, he punishes the serpent. And we, we uh, learn about the, the, the doom of Satan, that prophecy about Satan's doom. Christ coming and he's going to be doomed. So he's working behind the scenes. I want you to understand that he's working behind the scenes. We have to know how he works. Now, remember what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about uh, this. I'm going to title this, and I want this title, uh, Satan, Satan Going Global. So uh, this is Satan Going Global. Okay? And I'm going to show you how it does that. Okay, who has, Seth, what do you have? I have Revelation 2.10. Okay, go, go there. Revelation 2.10. Do not fear what you are about to suffer. Behold, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested, and for ten days you will have tribulation. Be faithful okay. unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. All right, so I want you to stay with me. Satan is not literally going to uh, throw the saints into prison. It's the people, there are people who are going to do that because of their stance. And he and the uh, John is saying Satan is going to throw you into prison. That's Christ. Uh, John is a prophet. You see, but I want you to see that he's saying Satan is going to do that, but Satan is not literally going to do that. Uh, they're going to be uh, punished by some people. Uh, and so Satan is working through those people. I want you to grasp that. Satan's work with those people. So what God is doing in the book of Revelation is taking us right behind the scene. He's taking us right behind the scene. See? So that's not Satan literally. It's the people that's going to do that. But God, he's saying that Satan will do this. So Satan is utilizing those people. He's not, he's not possessing them. It's them who desire to do that. And he's... He, he found an opportunity to do what he wants to do, and he jumps on it. There's some things I don't understand as far as I can go with that. So it's really us, it's not him, but he takes the opportunity. Who has, who has the other verse? I have uh, John 8, 44. Okay. Go ahead. Ye are the... <clears throat> Ye are of your father and the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own nature, for he is a liar and the father of it. Okay. So to read that passage, I want to go the whole. I don't. Want, I don't. I don't have time to go over the whole passage. But the Jews were, of course, they were proclaiming they are children of Abraham, etc. But they were, uh, he's speaking the truth, and, and they were basically going against the truth. They were liars. Uh, they wanted to kill him. And so he says, basically, you are of your father. You are of your father, the devil. And that's pretty uh, harsh. He's right to the point. You're not of Abraham because Abraham will not do me the way you want to do me. Therefore, since you seek to murder me, uh, you are of your father, the devil. Okay. I want you to get this. That was the Jews who wanted to do this because of many reasons. One of envy. Um, they were envious of him. And so because of their envy, etc., they seek to kill him. 
Satan's behind the scenes. What you hear, what we read there, Jesus exposes Satan. You are of your father devil. You remember when Jesus, when he mentioned his death and Peter disagreed with uh, his death and he tells Peter, get behind me, Satan. You see, uh, Peter's thoughts, his words were totally different than the gospel. And, and Jesus goes right behind the scene, get behind me, Satan. You see, and so uh, who has uh, Ephesians chapter 2? Verse 1 through 3, I like that one. I've got it. Ephesians 1, or Ephesians 2, 1 through 3. And you were dead in your trespasses and sins, in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and in the mind. And we were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. Okay. So if you, I, I want, I was good. I'm, have, I'm going to go there. I like, thank you. I want you to see, let's go back to this to see, because we have to see how he works. Um, and of course, the Ephesians are now Christians. They have been baptized for the mission of sins. Uh, they were added to God's kingdom, God's church. Uh, if you want to read about Ephesus, I believe it's Acts chapter 19. Um, just like Sean read. Now watch this. And you were dead, you and you were dead in your trespassing sins in which you formerly walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. Okay? Among them, we too all formerly lived, we too all, see, in sin, formerly lived in the lust of our flesh, indulging the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. Now, I want you to see that. Now, notice how when you read that, in which you formerly walked according to the course of this world, right? The world, not according to God's law. And according to the prince of the power of the air, of the spirit that now work, working in the sons of disobedience. He's now working in the sons of disobedience. So th those people who choose to uh, go against God, who choose not to do God's will, um, they're followers of Satan. He's, you know, and he says it, working in the sons of disobedience. So if you're disobedient, then you actually become, uh, you, you have to be careful because Satan, take, what he does, he takes advantage of that. And, and he's, his, his objective is to destroy your soul and, and to destroy anyone else's soul. So a person who is disobedient, uh, Satan is, he takes the opportunity and tries to destroy. We have to be very careful, that's what he does. And, and I'm not going, in, I want it going into this tonight, but, uh, the stubbornness, the hard heart is what he really uh, takes advantage of. People cannot see their wrongs, their faults, etc. Uh, they're going to they're going to go in that direction, and they're going to do damage. It's going to happen, and they can't see it. And Satan is going to take advantage of it. See, among first year among them, we too all formerly lived in the lust of the flesh, indulging the desires of the flesh. See, the desires of the flesh. They were indulging in the desires of the flesh and, and of the mind. So Satan took advantage of that. Satan took advantage of that. Satan took advantage of that. It was them. And were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. Naturally, people who sin against God will naturally lose their soul. Okay? So that's how he works. That's how he works. Now, now understand this. When you read the text, at one time, because of their disobedience, they were under the power of Satan. But verse 4, but God being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved and raised up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Read that. So you see why Satan's angry. You see that he lost the gospel when the Ephesians were introduced to the gospel in Acts chapter 19, well, 
agree that they burned their books, etc. They got rid of their witchcraft. Uh, Satan lost that. The gospel did that. See, Satan was influenced. He was influential over the Ephesians. And when Paul preached the gospel to them in Ephesus, the gospel retained the influence. And, and read it, you'll see how it works. So they now they're no longer children of disobedience. They're no longer disobedient children. They are obedient children. So that's that's what he, that's 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 how he works. He looks for an opportunity. Uh, I'm going to turn to First John chapter three, and verse ten. I had it. First uh, John chapter three, verse ten. I want to move fast. I want to uh, get to uh, my. I want to get somewhere else. Turn to First John chapter three, and verse ten. If someone has it before me, you can read it. First John chapter three and verse ten. I think I'll beat you to it. Uh, I'm going to read verse nine. First John chapter three, verse nine. No one who is born of God practices sin because his seed abides in him. That's the seed is the word of God, and he uh, cannot sin because he is born of God. By this, the children of God, by this, the children of God and the children of the devil are obvious. Watch what he says. So it's obvious. It's obvious. Remember, we're not ignorant of Satan's devices. It's, it, the Bible saying the children of God are obvious and children of Satan, they are obvious. They are obvious. Now, that may sound, people may not get that, but that's, I can see. I'm going to read that again. By this, the children of God and the children of the devil are obvious. How do I know? Anyone who does not practice righteousness is not of God. That's how I know. That is how I know. See? Nor the one who does not love his brother. That is how I know. So you have one who does not love his brother according to the scriptures. Uh, that person is of the devil. Now, that's, that's interesting. Uh, the person who's not practicing righteousness that person is of the devil. Uh, that's that's obvious. Because see, that, that's what he's saying. If, if, if you're not obedient to God and you're doing other things, then God is not utilizing you. The devil is. Okay? So that, that's how he... Um, I'm going to 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. So I want, before I make, my, I make another point, I want you to get this. Second Timothy uh, chapter two, and I'm going to go to verse 21. Second Timothy chapter two and verse 21. Second Timothy chapter two and verse 21. I'm going to look at, therefore, I'll read verse one. Therefore, if a man cleanses himself from these things, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified, useful to the master, prepared for every good work. See that? Now flee from use, useful lust and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace with all those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. That's people of God. But refuse foolish, ignorant speculations, knowing that they produce quarrels. And the Lord's and the Lord's bond servant must not be quarrelsome. So that's so that's if you're quarrelsome, that's of the devil. That's that is not of God. See how he does that? Look at verse three. But refuse foolish, ignorant speculation, knowing that they produce quarrels. And the Lord's bond servant must not be quarrelsome, but be kind to all. See? Be kind to all. That's a person of God. If you're not kind to all, that's of the opposite. Able to teach, patient with wrong, patient when wrong. See, that's a godly person with gentleness, correcting those who are in opposition. And perhaps God may grant them repentance, leading to uh, the knowledge of the truth. And they may come to their senses because of the actions of the godly person and escape from the snare of the devil, having been held captive by him to do his will. You see that? So if, if, if you're not obedient to the truth and you see this attitude here, you, the, the loving, et cetera, and, and actually Satan has you in a trap. So 
there's a, a Christian should do things to uh, help that person see his ways and, and escape the, the trap of the devil. But notice what, look, notice what it says in verse 26, and they, that they may come to their senses. See, people are living in sin. They are ignoring the law of God. Uh, it could be uh, their, moral, their life is, is mixed up morally. Their life is mixed up doctrinally. Their attitude is mixed up doctrinally. And, and, and so he's telling, this is how you behave. So maybe, and they may come to their senses and escape from the snare of the devil. That means people like that, the devil has them. And why does he have them? Having been held captive by him to do uh, his will. See, his will. So that's what he does. He's looking for an opportunity to do his will. And we have to be careful that we don't give him that opportunity. It's obvious. It's obvious. Sometimes we don't want to. We don't want to see it. We ignore it. But it's obvious who is doing God's will and who is doing the work of Satan. It's obvious. The Bible says it's obvious. See. So that's how he works. Remember what I said. Now he looks for an opportunity. Uh, to uh, seek whom he may devour. So once he finds an opportunity, I can't go behind the scenes. I just know he he uh, he get he, he he gets hold of the opportunity. He takes advantage of it. Now this is just we'll get into some other parts concerning what he does another time. But I want to stay focused on what we're talking about tonight. So stay with me. Don't let your mind go different places. Now watch this. So remember, Satan. We're going to we're going to deal with uh, tonight. We're going to deal with this morality, immorality. I'm going to show you how Satan, through immorality, uh, went global. He's going global. He he's already gone global. Now I'm going to. Now I want you to stay with me. Um. In I want someone to give me Leviticus chapter 20, verse 18. I need you to turn there for me because I, I want to get all this. So Leviticus chapter 20 and verse uh, 13. And then someone get uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 and 10. I've got Leviticus. Okay. Now watch, watch how I deal with this. I'm going to go there too. So ho hopefully someone has... First Corinthians chapter six, verse nine uh, through ten. I have uh, Corinthians. You have Corinthians. Okay, let yes. me go. To, let me go to Leviticus chapter eighteen myself. Okay, someone read chapter twenty. Now, what? Watch. Just stay with me. Uh, chapter twenty, verse thirteen. Who has that? I do. If a man also lies with mankind, and he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They surely they shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. Okay. That is the old that is the old covenant law, which is the law of God. You, you'll see the the this law concerning now watch watch this of homosexuality. You'll see that in the patriarchal law, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, you'll see how God condemned uh, those acts, acts of immorality. And then uh, the law of Moses came into existence. Those things are written down. But those things, those things were already happening before God, uh, before the law of Moses came into existence. God exposed those things. You see, and he always condemned uh, that act of immorality. Now, in Leviticus, now he just read that, watch this, Leviticus 18 and verse 20. You should, now watch this. You shall not have intercourse with your neighbor's wife to be defiled with her. See, that's a sin. People agree with that. Neither shall you give any, listen, neither shall you give any of your offspring to offer them to Molech, nor shall you profane the name of your God. I am the Lord, so do not offer your children to this false God. That's a sin against God. You shall not lie with a male as one lies with a female it is abomination 
all see that's a sin against God. This, he mentioned these sins. That's also a sin against it's abomination. Leviticus 20, verse 13. They should be put to death. He says, uh, also, you shall not have intercourse with an animal to be defiled with it, nor shall any woman stand before an animal to mate with it. It is a perversion. It's a sin against God. It's a sin against God. Do not listen. Do not defile yourselves by any of these things. For by all these for by all by all these the nations. Notice this. For by all these the nations which I am casting out before you have become defiled. That is now all nations. That's also included this homosexuality. Now watch this. See, so the nations were doing this. See, do not defile yourselves by any of these things, for by all these, the nations which I am casting out before you have become defiled. They, so I'm casting them out. They've been doing these things. For the land has become defiled. Why? Because of these acts of immorality. Therefore, I have visited its punishment upon it so that the land has spewed out its inhabitants. But as for you, you are to keep my statutes and my judgments and shall not do any of these abominations. See? That's including what we're discussing tonight. But as for you, you are not to keep my you are to keep my statutes and my judgments and shall not do any of these abominations, neither by neither the native nor the alien who sojourn among you, for the men of the land who have been before you have done all these abominations, and the land has become defiled. Okay? Wanna move on? I watch. That's the old covenant. Let's go to uh that's the law. Watch. Let's go to First Corinthians chapter six. First Corinthians chapter six. Did I tell? Does, does someone have that? I'm going to go to Romans chapter one. Yes. Who has that? I have wrote uh, First Corinthians six, and it was six through. What were the verses? Nine and ten. Nine and ten. Mm-hmm. Or the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually or immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. Okay. So, you see, you see, now there's more. We're not going to go over all of these laws tonight because I, I want you to get my point. They're in the Old Covenant, uh, without a doubt. You see examples in Judges chapter 19, verse 20 through 25. Uh, uh, Second Kings chapter twenty three and verse seven. Uh, you go to Genesis, Sodom and Gomorrah, etc. You see that in the Old Covenant. There's examples there of how God uh, feels about that, the punishment that uh, that will come into existence because of that act, uh, immoral act. Now, he now watch. Go to Romans chapter one. He says they should not inherit the kingdom of God. You see, so you see, there's a there's, that's a sin against God, and there's a consequence for that. Uh, you're gonna lose. Basically, you, you will lose your soul. Now, watch. Now, remember, we're talking about. You know, don't forget the top. You know, Satan's going. Satan uses it to go global. Now, watch. Um, so, this is the law we're talking about. Romans chapter one, uh, verse uh, twenty-six. I'm going to read that quickly. For this reason, God gave them over to degrading, uh, degrading passions. Those are shameful passions. For their woman exchanged a natural function for that which is unnatural. So uh, the Gentiles, uh, they change what they, the natural way of doing things, the natural form of intercourse uh, between men and women. He's talking about the Gentiles. They changed it and they did something else. So he's talking about the, the immorality, the, this homosexuality that, and so it, it's unnatural. It went from, uh, it, God created to be men and women. And he said, verse 27, and in the same way also, the men abandon the natural function of the woman and burn to their desire toward one another, men with men committing indecent acts and receiving in their own persons the due penalty of the error. And just as they did not see fit to acknowledge God any longer, God gave them over to a depraved mind to do those things which are not proper. And so when you read on and, and, and look at verse 32, he says, and, and also they know the ordinance of God, that those who practice such things are worthy of death. See, you're worthy of death. They not only do the same, but all, but also give hearty approval to those who practice, uh, uh, practice them. 
So God is also displeased with those who are supportive. You don't have to engage in that lifestyle, but he's also, he, all, he, he also uh, disapproves of those who are supportive. Because we're supposed to stand up against that, not support that. You see, so what I want to see, now let's go global. So you, we, we saw the old covenant law. We see the new covenant law. Uh, it's the law of God. God is against uh, that, those actions, the homosexuality. He's against it. And there's a penalty for that. So there's, it's right there. So how does Satan come into play? Now, I'm going to watch this. I'm going to read something here and then follow me. Now, we saw uh, God's laws. May 17th, 2004, homosexuals and lesbian couples were granted by the state of Massachusetts the right, uh, the right, right to marry, the, uh, the right to marry. It was the first state in the U.S. history to do so, okay? Just stay with me. In June 26, 2015, the U.S. Supreme Court held in a 5-4 decision that the 14th Amendment requires all states to grant same-sex marriages and recognize same-sex marriages granted in other states. Out of 50 states, 13 have not legalized uh, gay marriage, so which means 37 states legalized gay marriage. Texas is one that has not done it. Now watch. Research from Gallup indicates that 4% of people identify as LGBT in the United States, or approximately 10 million Americans. Watch. But that number has increased dramatically in the previous uh, few years, which means that there are likely more LGBT people than reported. From 2012 to 2016, the number of Americans who answered yes to that question jumped from 3.5 to 4.1 percent. That accounts for about 1.75 million more LGBT people in just four years. I want to see, watch this. I'll read something else. So far, 30 countries and ter 30 countries and ter territories have enacted national laws allowing gay and lesbians to marry, mostly in Europe and the Americas. So I want you to understand something. So these laws are being established, and, and I don't believe we're through with whatever needs to be done because we have certain people in power that will make these laws. And you see, there are millions of people who are disregarding the law of God, who are blind and, and will not change their ways as a result of based on what the Bible says, it's not what I'm saying, it's based on what the Bible says. They will lose their soul if they don't repent. I'm not saying this, it's what the Bible says. And it's interesting because like God, we should pour our, heart, we should pour our, heart, our hearts out to people who are looking to change their ways and obey God. Because you notice this, God sent his, his saints, Paul, his, his apostle, uh, when he went to Corinth, he taught homosexuals. He said, such was some of you. And he reminded them what they used to do. So God is showing his love towards all people, even that sin. It's a sin. God wants all to be saved. And so our objective is not to to belittle or to degrade. The objective is to hopefully somebody hears a message and they want to learn more about the gospel and their soul will be saved. That's the church. Just like anyone else, we uh, our job is to convince them and teach them uh, where salvation because God wants their soul too. That's why these things are, are that, that's why the gospel is out for everyone. So you see, now, D, now watch this. There's more if you want to read it on your own. This is the law of the world. Then you have the law of God. So you have the, we've read the law of God. Now we have the laws that pertain to the world. And many people are choosing to follow the law of the world. 
and they uh, disregarded the law of God. And at the end of time, when we leave this earth, we're going to face God. This law, we're not going to be judged by this. So, well, actually, if we follow this law, we're going to lose our soul. And so the objective is to follow God's law. You see, so now people have to make a choice. And so that's what Satan does. Satan, you see, well, is Satan behind the scenes? I'm going to show you. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. I don't see him here, but there were some people here who made decisions that contradicts the word of God. And because of their decision, millions of people, not only in the United States, in the whole world, will lose their soul. Now you say, okay, I'm going to go quickly to the book of Daniel real quick. I, I'm going to move quick here. Let's go to Daniel to see that this is, um, go to Daniel chapter, let's go to Daniel chapter 2 real quick. Daniel chapter 3, Daniel chapter 3. Now, this is, this is, Notice Nebuchadnezzar here in verse 1, Daniel chapter 3, verse 1. I'm going to go over this fast. I want to go so well, but I want you to see that this is uh, Satan's, uh, this how he influences people to sin against God. It's not him, he's behind the scenes. The king made an image of gold, the height of which was six, 60 cubits, and it's with six cubits. He set it up on the plain of Dora. In the province of Babylon. And so he sets up this image, and the people have to worship this image. And if they if they don't worship this image, image, they will be severely punished. This is a law. See? In verse 5, that, uh, that at the moment you hear the sound of the horn, flute, uh, lyre, uh, um, the trigon, the trigon, psaltery, pipe gun, uh, bagpipe, and all kinds of music, you are to fall down and worship the golden image. That Nebuchadnezzar, uh, the king, has set up. And whoever, whoever does not fall down and worship shall immediately be cast into the midst of the furnace of blazing fire. So let's go to, we're not going to go deep into that. Let's go to uh, Daniel chapter 6. So here we go. So this is what I want you to see. This is what, and so you see that uh, we're talking about this is the empire. And I believe here, with empire is this, I believe this is the Babylonian, this is the Babylonian Empire. In chapter six, I believe it's, I think it's uh, made of Persia. Um, so, so you see that the uh, the empire uh, controls a high percentage of the world. Okay, so he he established this law, and if you don't obey this law, then you're going to be going into the furnace of fire. So you, we're talking about now you have millions of people sinning against God. See? We're not ignorant of his devices. You make a law, people obey the law. And, and people are fooled. A lot of times people are fooled because, you know, people will go with the majority. Okay? See, Daniel chapter 6. Uh, there's another law that was made to try to uh, uh, destroy... Uh, Daniel in chapter 6 verse 6 and these commissioners and satraps came by agreement to the king and spoke to him as follows King Darius live forever all the comm commissioners of the kingdom the um, prefects and the satraps the high officials and the governors have consulted together that the king should establish a statute and enforce an injunction that anyone who makes a petition to any god or man beside you, O king, for 30 days shall be cast in the lion's den. O king, establish this. Now, O king, establish the injunction and sign the document so that it may not be changed according to the law of Medes and Persians, which may not be revoked. Therefore, King Darius signed the document that, it, that, is, uh, that is the injunction. So Daniel, of course, did not obey that law. So there's another law. Okay? Let's go to Revelation chapter 13. So let's watch this. Now, I want someone to get Revelation chapter 12, verse 9. Now watch this. 
in Revelation chapter 20, verse 3. So Revelation 12, verse 9, Revelation 20, verse 3. I've got 12 and 9. Okay, now I want you to read that, and I'm going to go to chapter 13. 12 and 9 says, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So he deceived the whole world. Okay? He lost his influence. Christ died on the cross. The gospel is in existence. This whole little world. Satan lost his influence. Uh, he, still, he was still deceiving the whole world. The entire world. Now watch. What does Revelation 20 verse 3 say? Revelation 20 and 3. <clears throat> and they threw him into the pit and shut it and sealed it over him so that he might not deceive the nations any longer until a thousand years were ended. After that, he must be released for a little while. Okay, so, so he was deceiving the nations. He deceived the whole world. How did he do it? Remember, he's always behind the scenes. He's a spirit. He's not possessing anyone, but he's looking for an opportunity, seeking an opportunity to see, walking about, seeking whom he may devour. Not just this country, not just this country, all over the world. Not just America, all over the world. He's looking for an opportunity. Remember, homosexuality, the laws protect them all over the world now. We read about that. What, 30 countries and territories have enacted national laws allowing gay and lesbians to marry. That's all over the world. So men are making decisions. Women are making decisions. Politicians are making decisions that affect the entire world. Satan going global. And, and people are doing that, you know, um, being blind, not realizing that if they continue in, in those acts, their soul will be lost. Now watch. So we, so we saw that in chapter 20 and chapter 12, he deceived the whole world. How did he do that? Well, in chapter 13, we're not going to, I'm going to go into detail because we studied this before. But of course, the beast is Rome. Go to Daniel chapter 7. I'm not going to go into it. But the beast is Rome. Okay? So Rome obviously is in control uh, based on the time period. Uh, the church came to existence during the Roman Empire, so it's 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 history. It's it's during the Roman Empire. So the mission we know, and I like I told you before, I'm inclined to believe that it was the mission, even though other em emperors persecuted Christians, but he took it to the extreme. You get into the history; others did persecute Christians, but the mission took it to the extreme. He is number eleven, and here he's number eight, and we discussed that one time in some other lessons. So what is he doing? So Domitian wants Domitian wants to be God. And, and, and he has the ability, the power to set laws to establish his decree. And there are those who don't obey his laws will be persecuted. So remember, he's the emperor. So the Roman Empire uh, controlled a high percentage of the world. You see? So now you have you have a law that's established. And if you don't obey those laws, then you'll lose your soul. So now because of him, many people have lost their soul. And look, look at, um, so no, notice Satan's behind the scenes in ver um, verse four. And they worship the dragon. And we look at chapter two and verse 17, that is the devil. They worship the dragon because he gave authority to the beast, that's Rome. And they worshiped the beast, Rome, saying who was like the beast, who was like Rome, who was able to make war, wage war with him. And there was given to him a mouth speaking arrogant words and blasphemies and authorities to act for 42 months uh, was given to him. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy and, and, bla and blasphemies against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, that is uh, those who dwell in heaven. And it was given to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them and authority, uh, authority over every tribe and people and tongue and nation was given to him. And all who dwell on the earth will worship him. Everyone whose name has not been written from the, from the foundation of the world in the book of life 
of the Lamb who has been slain. So now look at um, look at uh, verse uh, verse sixteen. And there was given to him to there was given to there, and there was given to him to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast might even speak and cause as many as do not worship the image of the beast be killed. And he and and, and he causes all the small and great and the rich and poor and the free men and the slave to be given a mark on their right hand on their forehead. Now, I'm going to shut down now. I'm looking at the time. But I want you to read it on your own. So now you have you have a Roman emperor who establishes a Roman law and Rome is behind him. They're working together. See, he has his power through Rome. He's an emperor. See, he has his power through Rome. And so because of the law that was established, many people will follow that law. Now, now, who's behind the scene? Look at verse 17 again, or chapter 12. And the dragon was enraged with the woman and went to make war with the rest of her offspring. That's Satan, right? And look at verse 4, chapter 13, verse 4. And they worshiped the dragon who gave authority to the beast. So uh, Satan is be, was behind Domitian. Domitian did not know that. It was his doing. But Satan took advantage of that situation. And, and try to conquer as many people as he can to destroy. So he, that's how he goes global. Understand this, he goes global. Remember what I said? Rome owned a high, controlled a high percentage of the world. A high percentage of the world. So the, the, that decision affected in that world. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar, uh, the Babylonian Empire, controlled the high percentage of the world. So his decision affected the entire world. So you see how Satan, so what you see here in in decision of uh, with homosexuality and making these laws, this just not the United States, it's all over the world. I just read that. All over the world. So we're talking about millions and millions of people are going to lose their soul because they're following something, this 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 immorality that goes against the law of God. That's how he goes global. He utilizes Especially people who have the ability to write laws. You have people who live that lifestyle. They become politicians, and they're blind. And they, they, they in their mind, they're doing their hundred percent, hundred percent right what they're doing. And they establish these laws, and and people follow these laws, and, and they and what happens? The, the, the laws of God are totally disregarded. See, but that's how it works. I'm going to try to continue uh, where I left off. We're going to stay here. I want to see. I want us to see some more how he goes global in some other ways. We're learning about Satan and how he works. Remember, what the Bible says we are not ignorant of his devices. Second Corinthians chapter two and verse eleven. If we can help you uh, tonight, if you need prayer, please let it be known as we send a song for the invitation. <laughs> 